gun toe. I couldn't tell them the real reason why I'm worried. They think it's because of Leopold. But it doesn't matter whether he's my friend or not. Because when Bruno finds out he's not getting any more tribute, he'll run him up. If that happens, everybody will run away from here, and Lamp will possibly desert it. Boy, that makes me mad. Nobody has any right to do that. I'll fix that big brute. Huh? <laughs> hey. What you doing here, Jonathan? You waiting for somebody, or what? If it's Pookie you're waiting for, I understand she's sick and ain't gonna go to school today. Huh? Don Leopold don't want Pookie to be seen with you anyway, because tree frogs ain't fit company for her. He did not say that. <laughs> How can you be so certain? Because I know that Pookie's father is a gentle frog. Flattery won't get you anyway, you little jerk. They'll never let Pookie have anything to do with a tree frog. You two clowns don't know anything about it. We do know that it's fun to beat up on a certain smart like little tree frog. Yeah. <laughs> no. <laughs> you big bully. <laughs> You notice that Jonathan just called you a catfish? What? Oh, 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 for you to become a gentle frog. But the only thing that me and Lefty did was... <coughs> Beat it, punk. Ah, uh, yes, sir. Come on, Mo, before he hoists somebody. Are you all right, yeah. Jonathan? Yeah. Those are really rotten kids. It's all right. You're a good dad. Is Pookie really very sick? Well, she was kind of worried about the catfish monster, so I told her it was okay if she stayed home from school today. I certainly can't say I blame her for that. Well, it seems like everything's all right here, I reckon. Uh oh! <laughs> Darn! What? Hey, hey. Alvin and Derek, what are you doing here? Well, Darren, you look very prosperous. Indeed, yes, and may I say it's a great source of satisfaction to me to see a friend doing so well in his chosen profession. Well, with all due modesty, I must confess that I have done rather well as the personal bodyguard of the great Don Leopold. We've heard that this Mr. Leopold is a local frog father, that he runs all the rackets worth looking into in Rainbow Pond, is that correct? The word is over in Lobster Lagoon that he might be hiring extra help. Uh... And we thought that with our old pal, sorry being on the inside, as it were, that you might put in a good word for us with Mr. Leopold. What do you say? Well, why not? Mr. Leopold's a reasonable man. No reason why you shouldn't want a couple more good claws. Precisely my thinking. I can't help feeling sorry for poor Jonathan, being that he knows all about Bruto, and he can't say nothing to nobody about him. Listen, Pookie, I've been thinking of blowing the whistle on Bruto and maybe ratting on him to all the other frogs living here in Rainbow Pond. Oh, Papa, you really mustn't. If the people knew about Bruto, it would only start a terrible panic. Well, I just can't sit around doing nothing. Excuse me, Mr. Leopold. I have a couple of friends to present to you, sir, if you have a moment. Mm. Uh, some of the frogs here in Rainbow Pond have been a little slow lately in coughing up their tribute, and I thought that you could use a couple of extra claws to make them jar loose uh, quicker. Nah, I don't need the likes of these guys. What are you bringing mugs around here for? I don't get it. You're always complaining that there's not enough claws around here. Well, I changed my mind. I just can't give a job to every bum who comes around here. Okay, okay. Anything you say. <laughs> I must say your attitude is not at all what we were led to expect, Mr. Leopold. Yeah, who you call a bum? Would you rather be called boy lobster? Now get out of my house! But, but, but. 
Yes, very reasonable fellow, Mr. Leopold. I can't figure out what's wrong with him. I know what's going to be wrong with him the next time I run into the bunk. Come on, Derek. Let's get out of this joint. What do we need with an opening bullfrog, anyway? I'm not going to forget this. <laughs> hey, what the? Yeah, now what the place is going on? It's an earthquake. Hey! That's got to be a call from Bruno. Are you aware of what has occurred here? A heinous wretch of low degree has dared to intrude on the sanctity of these quarters and has stolen away with the eggs of my dear friend Tiger Joe. Ah, uh, who would dare to steal something from you? What'd you say? I was just wondering out loud who would dare to come in here and try to steal something from your eminence. That's exactly the reason I called you here, understand? How would I know anything about anybody who was nuts enough to steal from you? Maybe the dad's just had and swam away. That's hardly likely. Now you just listen and do as you are ordered. I want you to retrieve those eggs. And also to get your daughter down here at once. Do you understand? Yes, but... Uh... Yes, but what? <laughs> well, that is... Uh... I'm not going to argue with you. You have your orders. Now go and do as you're told or I'll eat you right now. <laughs> Mr. Leopold! Why are you looking so downhearted? Oh, Jonathan the Catfish Monster said that I gotta bring Pookie to him today or suffer the consequences. What? That means you'll eat everybody in the pond if I don't do it. That horrible monster, he can't just keep getting away with that kind of stuff. No matter what, you can't take Pookie to him. Oh, I don't know what I'm gonna do, Jonathan. I know that I can't take Pookie to him, but what else can I do when he says that he's going to eat everybody in Rainbow Pond if I don't obey him? Oh, how could anybody be so vicious and rotten? We'll just have to think about it. I hope you can think of something. I'm going to leave now. I'll miss you both. I've decided to go to the catfish monster, Papa, before he becomes a danger to everyone in the pond. Sooner or later he could run amok, and I can't permit that to happen. No, Pookie, not you. You can't! Spooky, you just can't do it! What other choice do I have, Jonathan, when he says he'll eat everybody in the pond if I don't go? But he may decide to eat you. It's just too dangerous. He would probably eat me in any case. This way gives me some time to plan. Don't you agree that I'm right, Papa? Oh, my poor Pookie. Please don't worry about it, Papa. I just know that you and Jonathan will figure out some way of rescuing me. Oh, I still think Pookie shouldn't be allowed to go. Oh, Jonathan, there is no other way to appease the monster. No. Jonathan, please understand. <laughs> Unable to understand the gravity of the threat Bruto poses, Jonathan runs to another part of the pond. As always, when he is deeply troubled, he finds solace in playing his reed pipe. And as the music steals across the surface of his consciousness, the sharp pain in his heart becomes less, and the light of hope is rekindled. Well, now what? Not certain of what he intends to do or where he is going, the frog boy starts to run. Until at last... Ah! It's happening. The thing he most dreads is indeed happening. A funeral procession is setting out from Leopold's house, bearing large shells filled with tribute. And leading the mournful troop is the Don's most precious possession, his beloved daughter, Poo. 